It's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday for Sunday, April 10th, 2022. This week I'd like to talk about enclosure size in respect to a post that I saw in, I believe, the Advancing Herpetology Husbandry Group. And somebody had a question regarding the size of enclosure for their hognose snakes. And I quote from their post, I keep seeing this from breeders. These guys do best set up in smaller enclosures and as similar as possible to what they're used to. Now I agree with the part that says that when you get a new snake they should be set up as similar as possible to what they're used to. Because a change of any kind is usually distressing for an animal. And so even if a snake has been kept in conditions that are not like you're going to keep them in, I do recommend setting them up initially in conditions that are very, very close to how they were kept before and gradually transitioning them to how you're going to keep them. Now, as far as the enclosure being too big, that's just ridiculous. Snakes live on the planet, in all of nature. They literally have access to anywhere, well, almost anywhere they would like to go on the planet. And in regards to hognose snakes specifically, we actually have hognose snakes, plains hognose snakes, Heterodon nasicus, here in Colorado. They're native to the state that I live in. My colleague, Angie Canny, who I've interviewed on my channel before, who is basically um, studying for her master's in wildlife biology or some equivalent degree, is doing a research thesis that takes her out to Pueblo, Colorado, where she walks the grassy plains often. And she's not specifically studying snakes, but she often tells me, hey, I almost accidentally stepped on a rattlesnake, or hey, I came across a hognose snake today, and it did that thanatosis behavior, it was plain dead. And when she sees these snakes, she's walking out in the open, studying the things that she is studying. So these snakes are literally out in the open grassy plains of Colorado, which are acres and acres of open space. Now, whether that's because they're moving from one location to another, or they're hunting, or they're out basking, or they're finding it just reinforcing to stretch out in the sun and, and move and get exercise, or they're looking for resources like water, food, or shelter. Who knows? But these snakes, including Plains hognose snakes, spend time out in the open. Miles and miles of open prairie in Colorado. So you can't... So it's not the size of the habitat that you put the snake into. You literally cannot put a snake in a habitat that is too large, in a space that's too big, unless you're failing to fill that space up adequately with things that that snake may need. So it isn't the size of the space you're putting the snake into. It is how you furnish that space and the options that you provide for that snake within that space. Things like microclimates. Are you providing areas where it's humid? Are you providing areas where it's dry? Are you providing areas that it's in between? Hot areas, cold areas, warm areas. Are you providing different terrain? Are you providing tight places for them to squeeze into when they want to do that? Are you providing different hides for them? Are you providing different textures, different substrates like sandy substrate, rocky substrate, soft substrate? For hognose snakes, they do like to burrow, so I like to provide more than one type of substrate in the enclosure for them. But the more variety and the more things that you can fill that space up with to offer that snake options make it more like being in nature. Because when they're out in the open plains of Colorado, out west here, they're not spending all of their whole life living out in the open. They spend some of their time out in the open and they spend some of their time probably hiding in very tight, dark spaces. They spend some of their time in water. My hognose snake sometimes gets in her uh, big water dish. Sometimes she gets in her moss box. Sometimes she gets in the driest spot in her enclosure. 
So they literally have all these options in nature and they choose to go to these different locations and be out in the open when they want or when they have a need to because all behavior has a function. And they choose to be in tight, dark spaces when they feel the need to do that. So if you can provide all of those options within your enclosure, that's fantastic. And it doesn't matter how large your enclosure is. It's not going to be too big if you're providing them with all of these different options. About four months ago, I moved our Plains Hognose Snake Hazel into a new enclosure. And I did it behind the scenes for my Patreon subscribers. So I thought I would just show you that video now and let you see the space that she's in. Now Hazel's not a very big snake. She only weighs a few hundred grams. And she's in a four foot long by two foot deep by 18 inch high enclosure. So let's take a look at that. This is our Plains Hognose snake, Hazel, in her new enclosure. It's new to her. It was an enclosure that I had a carpet python in, but I honestly just don't think it's appropriate for a carpet python because it's only 18 inches high and the shelf takes up over half of the deepness. And I thought it would be better for a more terrestrial snake because this way it's nice and long, it's four feet long and it gives her two levels, two flat levels. I still put her perch in there that she used in her other enclosure, but honestly, she's been climbing up and using the second level, just kind of, as you see here, for her to drape on and lie on. And I left it purposefully pretty plain up top because I figured that's where I can rotate enrichment items in and out of. And then I can leave the bottom level the same with all of her normal things that would not change. And then I can just add different stuff up top periodically, but it's four feet long by two feet deep by 18 inches high. And I need to change that sign. Actually, Cloud Forest Designs needs to make new signs because they're no longer called Western hognose snakes, they're called Plains hognose snakes. Hi, Hazel. And she moved into this out of a two foot long by 16 inch deep by 18 inch high enclosure. So this has more than doubled her space. I'm just really happy about it. And she's been using it and moving around and not scared or anything. So I'm really pleased that she's able to have this now. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.